Hi everyone, I'm Ken Wilson Max and I'm going to show you how I paint uh, by painting um, Lenny, the character. Okay, so the first thing I like to do is um, I have a specific brand of very cheap but very good uh, cartridge paper. It's usually about 300 grams, so it's quite thick. Um, it doesn't buckle uh, when you put too much water on it. And um, I also use anything to make a mark. Normally it's a pencil, but if I don't have a pencil, I'll use a pen. I don't really mind or care. Um, I also have a range of brushes. Um, and they're either big, big thick brushes or sort of medium sized brushes or fine brushes. So, you know, and I can get away with just using one of each. I, I don't have to have all of them here. It's just, uh, it depends how I'm feeling um, in that particular moment. And what I'd like to do is, what I like to do is I like to first draw the character I'm going to uh, paint um, because I don't want to be painting it twice or three times and I'll start with a with the shape of the face and in my experience over you know all the time of me doing books I've realized that young children toddlers have much bigger heads than 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 they have bodies so I try to make the heads I'll start with something quite round even though this may not be the final shape. Um, and then I'll start to fill in the details. Details like, in this case, Lenny's uh, nose, which is just a tick. And once I have his nose in place, I know that I'm gonna draw his eyes almost in a triangle. And I'll just denote just a quick sketch as to where they're going to go. I'm not worrying too much about details right now. I'm just making sure that I have um, everything everything that I need to have to build his face. And now that I've put his features in and I'm quite happy with them, I will start to add his chin and his cheeks, which will tell me that I've drawn that first uh, shape a little bit too big. So um, especially when I add his ears, and and then I've got to add his hair. And he's got sort of really big, thick, curly hair. So I will just sort of make up the space and what it's just going to be, looks like it's not been combed or that. It's just really big, big curls. And when I'm painting the, in the details, I will start to maybe change that shape if I have to. But at the moment, I'm quite happy. Um, I normally would step away and then come back to it later because now as I can see I've just changed where his eyes are going to be so I can get rid of and keep keep the ones that I want. Um, also I'm realizing that maybe his ears could be a little bit smaller. Okay. Um, as I said his shoulders are going to be a lot smaller than his head in, in some ways so in this case, we're going to make him wave. And what I like about children's fingers, just like the drawings, is that they're just very, very simple depictions of every, even children's fingers. I mean, the real children's fingers are so simple. They're small and they're chubby. Um, and then his other arm is going to be round, round down by his side. We're not going to worry about that for now and there's the bottom of his t-shirt. So we have the makings of a Lenny right here. Okay. When I'm happy with that sketch, um, I, will, I will then start to remove lines uh, in any way that I can. Obviously, yeah, I've got a rubber here, but you know, sometimes I'll paint over them. If, it's, if I'm using a pen, I'll probably paint over the lines because the paint's going to allow me to do that. And then starts this whole idea of um, uh, deciding what he's wearing for the day. Um, you'll notice he hasn't got a neck, he hasn't got a chin, he hasn't got, a, there's no, there's no, below his chin line it's not there. And That's one of the things about making these drawings quite sort of cute and warm and friendly in a way. You take away all these um, uh, anatomical details, um, so you reduce to shapes which convey 
the emotion that you want him to have. He's a very kind little gentle boy, basically. So now comes the color. Um, I use acrylic paint and I found that it was the easiest way I could uh, paint things in a hurry and get a result that I could that, that would allow me to keep painting, okay? Um, if I was using watercolors, I think I'd have to be much more skilled um, and much more patient. And sometimes with these pictures, I'm trying to convey also an action. So I'm trying to move as fast as possible. Um, and what I like about acrylics is that it allows you to do just that. And I like it that you can, it can go on thick so you can actually show the brush strokes that you're dealing with. Um, which I think also helps to convey a handmade feel of any of my illustrations. And I'll show you how quick it goes down and how quick this goes from pencil to finished picture. Okay, so in fact what we're going to do, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to paint a background. So we're going to give him a bit of sky behind him, a little bit of blue and a bit of white. And it doesn't matter what brand you're using. I mean, uh, you know, I, uh, you just paint is paint. Um, I'm using a big brush so I can make really big sky things and really going for it. So there's no real, I'm not worrying too much about what I paint over because I will go back later and um, fix, fix whatever it is that has to be fixed. So sometimes I will want to add some, um, some details to that. And that just means waiting for it to dry a bit and then just going through with the brush and kind of smoothing it in so you get some detail of the sky. Okay, that's done. You normally wash your brushes because acrylic does dry extremely quickly. And before you know it, your brushes can turn into just pieces of plastic, really. Um, and while I'm doing that, I'm thinking, okay, what next? I'm going to paint his uh, skin color. Um, and today we're going to have him wear a white t-shirt, so we're not going to bother with his t-shirt too much. Um, I always have some tissue handy or a cloth, uh, normally tissue, because I don't have enough cloths that I can spare. So here we go. So <clears throat> the paint I'm using is uh, a burnt umber and some white and some crimson just to give him some flushed cheeks if I can find the crimson which is around here somewhere here it is um, and I'll sort of set out the colors I think I've I normally don't use as much as I'm putting on here I normally use quite a little at a time because I'm making the painting happen as I go along and um, I know I'm going to use a lot of white because I'm going to mix it all, all into place. And because I'm working within a smaller space now, I'm going to try to, uh, you know, be a little bit more precise. So I'll take the brown and the white and I'll start to build what I think is his skin color. Again, I'm also trying to keep them as pure as possible. So if he's meant to have brown skin, he's going to have brown skin. It's not going to be anything in between brown and red. It's going to be definitely a brown, a brown skin tone. And I'm going to try to maybe leave an area for his eyes. So I know just to give me a guide because this paint is not like watercolor. It's not translucent. It's quite, it goes on quite thick. So you, I do need some pointers of where I am. And I tend to just leave little, little bits of the paint thinner so I can see, um, say, where the nose is or where the ears are. And then I like to mix the color sometimes on, onto the paper so that I get this very painterly, um, painterly look. Um, so it's not too flat. It's always got a little bit of texture happening around it, a little bit of brush strokes. Uh, yet you can see, and I don't mind that it doesn't always match up, okay? Because the whole idea is that your eye, as the viewer, your eyes are going to fill in the gaps um, in the inconsistency of color. Um, but in general, his skin color is not going to change. 
And also, if you think about it, uh, it could be that it's a bright day or there's a certain other type of light that's happening around him. So here we go. We're going to put the skin color also on his arms. And even though I'm trying to be precise, as you can see, uh, it's not really working. So I'm not really worried because I'm going to have a, a line which goes over it and cleans everything up. And um, that's kind of that. And then for the details of his fingers, which I made sure I paint, I drew nice and thick uh, and chubby, I'm going to use another fine br a finer brush just to get those details in. Um, but just for his cheeks now, I'm going to add a little bit of red so they kind of look a little bit more flushed and maybe above his forehead. Right. Wash that again. And now what I'm going to do is, um, I don't have to wash this one so thoroughly because we're going to paint his hair, which is black. And Lenny's hair is black, but it has these blue highlights, um, which I found was quite flattering. It makes it look as though light is falling on them, but you know, it's just quite a nice, it's better than just having a dense black area. Um, and again, I'm going to try and follow the lines, but I'm not too worried. Um, it's the, the lines are just my, my, my guide, as it were. And I'm just going to lay it on quite thick. And imagine that, you know, he's sort of, he hasn't had his hair brushed for quite some time. And the details of his hair, the edges, I'll leave until I apply the line uh, in, its own, in its own time. So for now, I'm just covering areas and I'm not worried that the paint is mixing. That's not a problem yet. Um, it's not a problem at all, actually. It's just trying to get him to come alive. So there we go. We're almost there. Um, obviously, he could have a larger body of hair, I suppose. But I'm going to keep it just here. Right. I'm going to wash that. And later on, of course, I'm going to wash these brushes properly. Otherwise, they really will turn into sculptures, which is not what we do, not what we want at all. Now, to paint the line, depending on the size of the image, I will use um, either this size brush or maybe something finer, something with a finer edge. And this one's quite soft, so it's really harder to be quite precise with it um, without making a squiggle. Um, but this other one, is about, it's kind of my go-to brush. In fact, it looks a bit like a pencil, so I really, really enjoy using it. And over the years, I've managed to use a black line or evolve the black line, so I'm quite happy with it now. In the beginning, I used to make a very squiggly line, um, but nowadays it's a lot more fluid. And I will sort of start with, uh, I won't necessarily start with the features, although I might start with his nose, let's see. It just gives me an area of where to, to work from. I know where that's there. That's good for me. That's like an anchor point. Um, and then the rest is just kind of going around the outline, cleaning up the areas between the painted area and the paper and trying to, I will sometimes um, press down on the, on, pr press down on the paper with the brush so that it, the line goes thicker or lift it slightly to get a finer line. And I'm constantly doing that all the way through doing a stroke. So for instance, this is quite thick now, but then I can sort of bring it up a bit um, and then bring it down again so that it's always doing that. It's always moving from thick to thin, which again is just something that's a characteristic of the way that I produce uh, pictures. There we go. Um, now comes his clothes, which are a lot easier because it's a white t-shirt. Um, there we go. And as I'm doing this, the paint on his face is beginning to dry already, which is quite useful. Um, it does mean you have less, uh, less smudges, uh, you know, unless I'm working really, really fast, which thankfully is not that often. Um, 
go. And he's beginning to come alive, waving. And as I said, I paint the nose first because that's just the anchor. And then I, it's like when it, all the other lines are, are done, the most important parts of this image are going to be his eyes and the way he smiles. Because if I get those wrong, then the feeling of the pictures also going to be wrong and um, might lead to me having to, to, to start again. Also, over the years, I haven't quite um, stuck to... I've, tried, or I've always tried to evolve the style so that I'm trying to add little bits of detail here and there where I can, um, but still keep it quite young. It's almost like the way some painters from the Impressionist era used to take out details in order to give you an overall feeling. This is along those lines, but I, I mean, I wouldn't ever say it was an Impressionist painting. So it's just the same idea that you can just use large areas blocked in with color or nothing in order to convey something um, rather than go in and, and make, make details which you may not need or which the audience may not be able to notice. And the audience in this case is, you know, three-year-old children, two-year-old children, so they don't need to notice much more than, than, what's, than what's immediate to them. There we go. Now come his, his eyes. And I've already decided where they're going. So there's one, there's another. And the final piece of this puzzle is his smile. And we're going to, and then we'll add a little bit of animation and uh, maybe a bird or two. There's Lenny. <laughs>